All right, everybody, Kyle Shepard from Outlaw Productions. We're down here at Welland for round number five for the Flat Track Canada Nationals. Here in the pits, doing a little bit of team talk with the Deadman race team. Now, why don't you tell us a little bit about the history of this race team? Well, uh, we all started off at Paris Speedway in the grassroots about three years ago. We went as spectators and checked it out. And the next weekend, we had, were all geared up and we hit the track. So obviously everyone plays a key role in the family for uh, the race team here. So why don't you tell us a little bit about, I mean, you got your two riders here, you have your mechanic. I mean, give us a little spiel on all that. Well, um, we'd like to think that uh, we have the perfect storm here. Brandy is a licensed mechanic and also an auto body, uh, licensed auto body mechanic. So he's double licensed. And um, I myself, is, I have a marketing background and graphic design background, so the two of us are able to promote Tegan and Tegan and Boyd and their racing and all the adventures that they want to take themselves on. Okay, so why don't you tell us the classes that uh, your two kids are running in uh, today? Um, well, Tegan runs the 85 class at Paris at the grassroots level. This is her first full season. She started off last year halfway through the season on the Baja and uh, now she's up shifting bikes. Um, Boyd is uh, running 65 at Paris in the grassroots and then he's also taking on the uh, Flat Track Canada series this year running the 85 and the 65 class. And he also does run the 85 class at Paris as well on his, on his 65. Well, you can always keep an eye out for these number 13 and 14 bikes of Deadman Racing out on the track. All right, everybody, still down in the pits here. Ran into the number 82 of Shane Corbeil with these fast-looking Yamahas. Privateer coming up in the intermediate class. Now, Shane, why don't you tell us a little bit about your racing history? Uh, been about uh, five years now I've been at it, and uh, second year intermediate, so we're slowly progressing, and uh, hope to see how this year goes, and maybe ask for next year, who knows. So as far as the season goes for you so far, uh, why don't you talk a little bit about your ups and downs and like what you're working towards heading into the end of the season. I mean, we're at the halfway point right now. Um, you know, stay consistent. That's all. Uh, that's what it's about, to win some championships. And uh, uh, we're looking at uh, tied for first in points in the Open, and uh, I'm sitting with a seven-point lead in the 450. So, yeah, like I said, it's just consistency is key, and I'm just going to make do with it. Right now, well, you got lots of sponsors backing you up this year, so why don't you give a little bit of love to them? Yeah, uh, you know, Claire Cycle, uh, Top Dogs Fitness, keeping me in great shape in the gym. Uh, you got Primo Auto, Crawl and Paving, WCG Photography with some great photos. Um, yeah, it's, it's working real well for me. Cal Tire, you know, they're a big sponsor of mine. So without them, you know, I wouldn't be here. Right on, number 82, head right on the track. Nick Becker coming to you from Outlaw Productions here at the Welling County Motorcycle Club. This year at the 2014 X Games in Austin, Texas, they announced that Flat Track might be in the 2015 Games. Now we're going to talk to some of our pro riders and hear their thoughts on it. Hopefully it could happen. I mean, uh, it's a pretty badass sport. It's definitely not like the action sports type of uh, X Games type of stuff, but... Uh It'd be cool. I think it's awesome, you know. Anything to get Flat Track out there more, especially on that stage with the X Games, I think that would be awesome for the sport. It would bring more riders, it would bring more spectators. So really, you can't go wrong with bringing Flat Track to the X Games. Absolutely, they're looking for a bunch of meatheads with crazy talent. So Flat Track's definitely what they want to get in there. Oh, for sure. It's all action, that's all it is. All Every race you see, bar banging, just that's all it is all day long just rubbing is racing i think flat track's a pretty you know it is an extreme sport um you know it's x games isn't always about racing um but i think you know the the thrill that it's going to bring to people um it's 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 definitely not going to be a waste of anyone's time oh for sure like uh that'd be like the opportunity of a lifetime you know hit the x games Every, everybody knows the x games everyone uh Everyone you could think of has heard of them, so uh, it's a good way to get your name out and it would uh, just be an awesome opportunity. Uh, it would definitely be something I'd be interested in doing. Yeah, I, I tried to do the X Games uh, many years ago with Supermoto, but it didn't happen. But it's always something that every, every rider or athlete would like to do, so absolutely.
Okay, race fans, not wasting any time. We're here for our production frame intermediate class. They hit the green light and they are off into the first corner. Everyone getting a good, strong drive. No one stalling off their bikes, which is a great thing to see. These guys are uh, intermediate riders, one level under pro. So you're going to see a lot of action going on here in round five of Welland today. Uh, most of these guys... Uh, local racers, um, as you can tell from our last uh, video that we posted up in the Nationals, there was a lot of uh, changes up between the pack, and uh, right now it's Scott Hartridge, Josh Dolan, Justin Crum, and uh, I believe that's Josh Barrick, and Braden Valley, Shane Corbeil, Dustin Lambert, Alex Olson, and Rob Churchill rounding out the, the whole race field for us right now. Scott uh, uh, Hartridge, he's got a little bit of a gap going on over Scott Dolan. Crummer, he's coming up uh, in the third spot there. He's trying to make a pass for second. Scott Hartridge, an American rider, coming up here over the border, running uh, with all the Canadian boys, doing a great job as always. And Scott Dolan just uh, doing his best to hold off Crummer, but uh, Crummer's got a battle of his own. He's got the rest of the pack nipping on his heels, and uh, there's going to be some uh, changes up in the pack here shortly. But uh, we got a great field going on here today. Alex Olsen getting a little bit loose, coming out of corner two there, losing a little bit of traction. But it's Dustin Lambert trying to make a move on the 82 is Shane Corbeil, that privateer rider that we talked to earlier today. And uh, Lambert, another local. Uh, a lot of these guys are all good buddies with each other. Uh, they a lot of, share a lot of tips and uh, techniques with one another, which is a great atmosphere to have at uh, any race uh, racing event that you go to. And uh, right now, this uh, race is just pre pretty much coming all right down to Scott Hartridge, the number 11 uh, Honda rider uh, coming out of the States there. And Scott Dolan wearing that uh, pretty funny looking uh, jersey there, that prison uniform it almost looks like. I uh, don't know if that's just a long sleeve shirt he got sick and tired of wearing or if it's just something custom that he's got going on. But Joshua Barrick uh, sitting in the third spot there. He made a pass on Kramer Valley. He's trying to run him down. And Corbin's uh, still just holding off uh, Dustin Lambert here. As you can see Alex Olsen rounding off the end of the pack there with the Rob Churchill. But uh, Hartridge, he's got a nice firm gap over the rest of the field here. Probably, I'd say about maybe 20, 25 bike lengths. Uh, maybe stretching a bit there, but hey, you know, it's going to get any bigger uh, as the race goes on here. Now seeing these guys, everyone's starting to get in that single file motion here, but it's this battle that keeps going on. Uh, Dustin Lambert, he's just trying to put all the moves on he can on the number 82 machine board field. Lambert getting up a little bit on the outside there. But uh, he's, it's a, it seems to be a technique that he's going out of the outside, trying to make that diamond pattern as he cuts back into the inside and get that bike squared up and make a strong drive off the corner. Joshua Barrick running real good, uh, having a good solid night. And uh, Scott Dolan holding down that second spot. Dolan running a ton of laps here, along with the other riders as well. But uh, Dolan's uh, a little bit higher up there in the age, so he's got a little bit more experience going on. But Scott Hartridge just holding down the fort here, doing a great job as always. And making his way around the final corner here at well in round five for the production frame intermediate class. Scott Hartridge in first, Joshua Barrick in second, Crum in third. Seems Dolan fell off pace or something happened. He must have got loose. You can see him coming across the end of the field there, uh, sitting in way back in the one of the, the final positions there uh, with Alex Olson and Rob Churchill. Not sure where exactly what happened. Uh, but that's an unfortunate event as he ran second uh, the whole race pretty much uh, right up until the last lap, last corner. But uh, it's going to be Scott Hartridge coming around here, grabbing his checkered flag, and he's going to go out for a hot lap. But we're going to go on a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back to bring you more action of the uh, expert production frame class. Okay, welcome back race fans, and it is time for our production frame expert class. Mike Zalaska making the green lights go, and these guys are all taking off, diving into that first corner. Now, we did talk earlier about a GoPro uh, floating around the pits, uh, and fortunately we got uh, Tyler Seguin. He picked it up, but traditionally we we're going to be putting it on the chest mount, facing it forward, on the handlebars, helmet, but today we thought we'd try something a little bit different, and the way that we put it on Tyler is going to change this and give you the best shot of all the action. As you can see, Tyler coming into the corner here, sitting in the third spot, making his way by uh, Donnie and Doug, 
and uh, this is what we got going on here. We got Tyler Siegel wearing the GoPro backwards, and this is going to really show you how close these guys get, how aggressive it gets, and uh, how loose the back end of their bikes get when they come in and out of these corners, and how essential it is that these guys are on the, the throttle, not bashing it off the rev limit or anything like that, but just a nice, smooth, consistent roll on and roll off. But it's Dougie Lawrence holding down the first spot here, right from the whole shot get-go. And Tyler Seaglin sitting in second, right behind him is Don Taylor. Don Taylor getting real close here. We're going to take a sneak peek here and see what's going on. Don's uh, just at least a half a wheel to a wheel length away. Don gets a drive on the inside, makes a move up on Tyler. And uh, you know Don's going to be hunting down Doug, just trying to get up into that top spot there. And uh, the rest of the field close behind, not too far off pace. Sean Hoy there, we talked about Sean. Uh, earlier in the season, uh, moving up to the pro ranks, Sean, we had a chance to uh, catch up with him, and uh, what's great and what we noticed with Sean is that his lap times, every time he goes out, are increasing at every single track he goes to, so he's getting that uh, expert experience down, uh, running with this faster pack, which is a great thing, but we got Mike LaBelle sneaking up by Doug Beatty here, the number 12 KBR rider, sneaking up on the 22 of Tyler Seguin. There's probably going to be a battle going on here shortly between them, but right now, there's a battle going on for first, and that's Doug Lawrence and Don Taylor, and these two are going to be going bar to bar for the rest of the night. You know they're not going to be giving up. But uh, Tyler Seguin getting out on the outside groove there, losing a little bit of traction. That's opening the door for Mike LaBelle, the number 20 T rider, who's uh, coming right on the inside there, takes the third spot. Doug Lawrence, Don Taylor still holding down that battle for first, and they're going to be having some fun there. Brandon Seguin at the rear of the pack there, and then Sean Hoy not too far off as well too. But uh, this is where it all gets interesting, folks, because you can see these guys are just non-stop battling, and uh, this is where all the action is. So if you really want to check out what, see what Flat Track's all about, be sure to come out to any of our national events that we host. You can go to flattrackcanada.com, get a full race schedule, and you can see what's going on. But right now, it's this battle for first that's going on, is Don is not giving Doug an inch on this track. Don making a move on the outside, trying to get some extra traction, looking for that groove. And uh, it doesn't seem to be working for him right now because Doug is just pushing him out to the outside. But Tyler sequin has got another rider up on him. And that's uh, his fellow partner rider from KBR, Doug Beatty, the number 12. And uh, I don't know what's going to be going on with them. But uh, we're going to come down to the uh, end of our race here. And that is going to be Doug Lawrence, Don Taylor, and Mike LaBelle rounding out our top three. And as Doug makes his way around corner three and four here, he's going to come up to Caitlin Hesmer, who's going to hand out the checkered flag. Doug's going to go up for a quick lap, but we're going to take a quick commercial break, and we're going to come back into our racing schedule with the intermediate open class. Now, Doug going out for a, a little bit of a wheelie session here right now, and uh, we're going to change it up here for a bit and show you a little first-hand view of what it's like to go for a ride with Doug Lawrence. Okay, race fans, it's the second last race of the night. You can see a lot of these guys in the intermediate class, the open class now, have switched over to their Framer bikes. A couple of them are still on their DTX bikes, but it's Joshua Barrick who's taking that whole shot, jumping into the corner early, goes out a little wide, loses a little bit of traction. Scott Dolan makes his way up on the inside. Justin Crum, you can always tell it's Crum because he's got a pink boot or a funny color on his bike, but that's him sitting in second spot right now with Joshua Barrick sitting on the outside of him. Scott Hartridge on the inside sitting in fourth. And I believe that is Shane Corbeil making some moves up on the outside there in the white and blue gear. Not sure exactly who's right ahead of him or beside him right now, but uh, it seems to be uh, all Scott Dolan right now, Justin Crum, Joshua Barrick. Corbeil's making some moves on the outside. He's pushing that bike, getting a little sideways there on that front straight. Scott Hartridge still doing a great job on the inside. He seems to have the stars aligned on that DTX bike here at Welland. He sure knows what's going on with it, knows what he's doing. And uh, you can see Scott Dolan, he's just pulling away now. It doesn't seem to be uh, much else going on there. And besides that, the rest of the pack just battling it out here. Everyone seems to be uh, wanting that top uh, second spot there. Kramer getting a little sideways there beside Josh. Josh and uh, Kramer 
These guys have been racing for quite a long time. They're going to be going bar to bar. They're not going to be giving up. Poor Beal not giving up either. He is, he's sitting back there in fifth spot. He's got his eyes on the prize of just getting by this small group to get up to and make up some time to catch up to Scott Dolan. And uh, Crum poking in his nose here behind Scott Hartridge, and they're going diving into the corner. Corbeil making a move around the outside, hopefully here, and as he seems to be catching up with these guys, and uh, as they start slowing up and uh, getting into each other, it's going to cause them all to slow down a little bit, so it gives the, uh, the advantage to a couple of the other guys to make some moves. You can see Alex Olsen on the white bike back there. Uh, he's just holding down last spot there with our other rider. All right, uh, Corbeil making a move around the outside of Crummer. Crummer pushing him out just a little bit. Smart tactic. But unfortunately, what that does is it makes Crummer have to go to the outside a little bit more in the next corner. And if Corbeil was right nipping on his heels, he could have just dove up on the inside and got by him. But uh, it seems that Corbeil lost a little bit of traction as well, too. But this race is all Scott Dolan right now. No one seems to be able to touch him. Scott Hartridge, Josh Repair going bar to bar here, going back into the corner, getting real close. And I believe that's Dustin Lambert, who is now battling and getting by Shane Corbeil. Lambert's going to be making some moves to get up there. Crumb making a move up on the outside of Josh. And uh, he's just going down to hold down that third spot right now. But Josh has got that inside line, so it gives him the advantage to get that little bit of extra drive coming out of the corner and he can force Crumb out to the outside but he seems to have fallen off pace just a little bit there to allow Crumb to get up ahead of him just a little bit more and uh, this is where it's all going to get interesting folks here as we're coming down to I believe two laps left to go or this is our last lap uh, it is the last lap here so this is where everything's going to get really interesting Scott Dolan holding down a strong first spot and Scott Hartridge sitting in second and uh, I believe it was Justin Crumb last we checked and it is Justin Crumb sitting in the third spot. So Scott Dolan, Scott Hartridge, Dustin Lambert makes a move on the inside on Crumb and takes the third spot. Unbelievable race for Dustin Lambert. But we're going to go to a quick commercial break and be right back. Okay, it's time for the open expert race here in Welland for round five of the Flat Track Canada Nationals. Mike's Alaska queuing everybody up, making sure everyone's ready to go on the line here. All eyes are on the Christmas tree and it's green, but we're gonna go with Don Taylor here. We got Don Taylor to wear the GoPro backwards. We're gonna give you a shot of all the action because Don takes the whole shot going into this first corner. The two KBR riders, Doug Beatty and Tyler Siegel in the 12 and 22, Holding down second, third, that's obviously a huge thing for KBR when these guys are running up in the top three spots coming into the first corner. This bike's got a lot of full Kurt puts in a lot of time and effort into these bikes, and you can see they're real strong. But it's Mike LaBelle out there on the outside on the 88, and uh, he's going to be doing the best he can to make sure he gets a top spot here tonight too as well. Tyler Siegwin not too far off behind him, but it's Dougie Lawrence making up uh, around the outside there right beside Chris Evans that's making this whole thing interesting. Clayton Isherwood not too far behind Evans there, but uh, right now it's Don Taylor leading the pack, and Don, he's got uh, his grooves, his lines all figured out. Doug Beatty, he's trying to do the best that he can to keep up with Don right now. Mike LaBelle, Doug Lawrence making some moves around the outside of the pack there, and it seems to be Doug's running that outside line real smooth and consistent. Chris Evans holding up uh, Tyler Seguin there just a little bit, because you can see Evans getting it a little sideways. Tyler having to check up some speed, but uh, Doug Lawrence makes a move by uh, Mike LaBelle, and uh, here we go. We've got a race on our hands, folks, because there's battles going on everywhere all over this track right now. You can even see it's even interesting for the last four riders of uh, the race back here. Those guys are all still duking it out. No one wants to get last, obviously, in this race because this is the open experts. So we got Don Taylor. You can see the little red light blink, and that is the GoPro that we've strapped onto him backwards. Now here's the funny twist to this whole story. We put one on for him frontwards as well too. So we're going to get a shot of that coming up uh, here in a couple minutes because we want to see what it's like to ride with Don Taylor and go for a quick little lap around Welland. But Doug Lawrence making some moves on uh, Doug Beatty here. And uh, Dougie's going to be uh, making a move around the outside. Dougie Fresh, Dougie Fresh. Does he make it? Does he make it? He gets that little bit of drive coming out of the corner here. Doug holds it down and gets it up in front of Doug Beatty. And uh, he's sitting in the second spot now, so he's got the target set on Don Taylor. Don Taylor riding that frame or doing his best he can. 
but uh, Doug Lawrence riding really great on this DTX bike he's got set up for him. The Town Moto rider, and uh, he's doing a great job representing uh, Town Moto. A great little bike shop in uh, Toronto. If you ever get a chance, make sure you go on down and check it out. But Doug Lawrence is just now nipping on the heels of Don Taylor. One small mistake from Don Taylor, and that's it. That's going to be the race. Don and Doug both heading into corner three. Coming into corner three here, it seems Don's checking up a little bit on the inside. Doug's now just drafting him, just letting him know he's there. Going on the outside, Don pushing him out to the outside there. Doug's going to have to probably move up onto the inside just to try and make something work here. Don's front view going here, but it's going to be Doug Lawrence that's going to be making the pass on him here. And we're going to see uh, what it looks like for uh, Don to be chasing down Doug going through this wild track. See, it's a really interesting track. These guys are not hugging the inside. They're kind of running the blue green right now. You can see a little bit of the blue and black move going on. And that's where these guys are running. Doug is doing a great job of sliding through the corner, being really consistent with the throttle. I'm sure you can really hear Don twisting the throttle there. He's not opening it wide up, but you can see Tyler Seguin coming around there, getting a little bit loose and doing what he can to hold on. And uh, the rest of the pack coming around here. Sean Hoy rounding off the end of the pack. But you can see Doug Lawrence coming into corner three as Sean was exiting corner four. And this is where everything's going to start getting really interesting because you got lapped riders coming up and you got to make your way around the traffic. And uh, this can be a game changer for anybody. You can definitely mix up any standings, uh, point standings for any season, for any rider, uh, as things get more and more interesting as the race season goes on. Yeah, Brandon Seguin rounding out uh, about mid pack there. Yeah, you got Clayton Isherwood out on the outside there. Lenny Monroe on that white DTX bike, the number two bike, coming around the inside there. And uh, Sean Hoy riding off the end of the pack here. But you know, right behind Sean is Dougie Fresh coming into the corner, running that middle groove, just doing a great job. He's, he's got that bike dialed, takes a look over his shoulder, see where Don is. And uh, I think he's got a smooth, consistent uh, race going on here right now. But it's going to be uh, all Doug, unless he makes any major mistakes here. But I don't think he's going to allow that to happen. And uh, as we're coming around here, I believe, for our white checkered flag, checkered flag, checkered flag. And Dougie does a nice little wheelie for the show, for the crowd. And uh, it's going to be Don Taylor taking second. And uh, third spot, not even really sure who was in third spot there because everything gapped out. I believe it was Doug Beatty that finished in a third. It could have been Tyler Seguin. I think Tyler Seguin maybe even made a couple moves to get up up on uh, the podium here tonight. So we've got Doug coming around. He's pumped. He's super excited. He's been traveling all over North America for his racing. And uh, if you haven't already, make sure you check out Doug on Facebook. Uh, check out his page. You can see everything that he does. And uh, Doug's going to go out for a small little victory lap here. He's super pumped. The crowd's pumped, and uh, this is going to be great. You're going to see a huge wheelie down this back straightaway because he launches it out of second corner here. Great job by Doug Lawrence. We're going to go down and talk with all the riders. All right, everybody, the Open Expert is over. Round five is done here in Welland, sitting third spot right now, the number 22, Tyler Seguin. Tyler, give us a little update of what happened with that race. Uh, I had a good start, and I was up there battling for the lead. And, uh, I had a good line down at the bottom. There was some moisture down there, and uh, the line was just it was going away from me, and I, I just I didn't want it to, so I was still chasing it. And uh, a couple of guys got by me on the outside, and I, I finally realized to come out to the outside and uh, got a couple positions back and just uh, – Road and road my race. So there's nothing wrong with the third spot. Now we're going to be heading to Leamington and Wheatley within a, a month's time. So what are you going to be doing to prep for that? Uh, I'm going to be, uh, you know, getting ready physically, and also Kerr will have my bikes ready, and uh, we're going there for a win. Well, there's a little story behind this bike tonight. Uh, Kurt put in a, quite a bit of uh, hours on it last night. They're working up until about four o'clock in the morning. You think it all paid off for you? Yeah, uh, I don't know how he does it. Like this guy doesn't sleep up till four in the morning. Uh, couldn't thank him enough for me every every weekend he's out here and uh four in the morning then up at seven getting them all dialed in for the day and it, it uh really pays off when i have something like that behind me backing me up right on well taking that third spot today the number 22 tyler seguin okay now taking that second spot the number 53 at don taylor done got away with a good start good lead and Dougie comes up out of nowhere there. You were talking about seeing the shadow in your corner of your eye. Tell us a little bit about what happened. Yeah, you know, I got a good start. Um, basically just, you know, I was hoping I could get out, just ride a clean race. Um, around mid-race, mid, mid race, uh, you know, my line started getting pretty slippery, and 
I started to see, uh, you know, a shadow of somebody. I knew I was on my own for a while there, and then I, I could tell somebody had crept up on me. Um, so I wasn't really sure where, you know, if I was riding the fast line or not because uh, I was leading the whole race and didn't really have anything to base it on. But as soon as Dougie went by me, uh, you know, he was way up top, and I jumped in behind him and tried to kind of follow his line. But I think, uh, you know, it just wasn't quite working for me, and I had to settle in as he uh, started to take away from all of us. Right on. Well, taking that second spot ain't going to hurt the points too bad, but uh, looking forward to Leamington Wheatley. Yeah, definitely looking forward to getting on some pea gravel and uh, pulling out my 750 Harley. And, uh, you know, I just want to thank Dealey Harley-Davidson for backing me and Parts Canada. And uh, definitely got to thank Jim Sale for putting some good race bikes underneath me. All right, look forward to Don Taylor, the number 53 at Leamington Wheatley. All right, and taking that top spot here at round five for Flat Track Canada and well, it is Doug Lawrence. Now, Doug, the start was a, a whole mess, a bunch of people going into the first corner there. You squeezed by Don Taylor, and then you started gapping out. So tell us the feedback. How was the track for you, and how did that race go? Uh, it was good. The track uh, changes here very quickly. I mean, when the sun goes down, it's totally different. So I, I've been getting good starts and running around the inside all day. And, uh, man, I didn't get a good start. I think I was fourth, and I got shuffled back to sixth. And... Uh, I knew I had the speed. I just hadn't been on the top side of the racetrack, and uh, said I just said to myself, "It's going to happen. It's got to happen right now." And uh, started picking guys off, and then I could see the 53 kind of getting away. And once I got into third, we were we were packing up into uh, Don. Me and Doug B were moving towards Don. I could see, and uh, to be honest, I felt like I was pretty quick, and. Uh, Figured I'd be able to make my move on him uh, pretty quick, but uh, I didn't want to uh, show him my cards, and because uh, I know he's he's pretty foxy around here, and uh, yeah, I didn't want to show him what I had what I had in store. But so I sat on him for a couple laps and uh, decided uh, then was the time. And uh, when I looked back, and I had a pretty pretty big lead, so it was a good day. I felt really comfortable on the bike. Well, yeah, like you said, track conditions here at Welland, they change uh, vicariously, and it's always a consistent thing when the sun's up, sun's down. But Welland seems, you just seem to tap right into this track. You're getting dialed in on it. Right, yeah, I've, uh, I've done a lot of circles around this place. And um, we come here often enough, you know, it's worth it to, to hone your bike in, hone yourself in, and just uh, dial in for what, uh, what we're going to expect here every Saturday night. And uh, things are working good. I got two motorcycles in my pit that work really good around here I feel like I'm in good shape I'm working hard at this and uh, you know I've I haven't been as strong as uh, as I am here at like the half mile cushion type of race tracks but uh, you know I think I'm unfortunately I'm gonna miss Leamington but uh, hopefully when London comes around I'll have something for uh, for all the boys and I'm not a one-trick pony <laughs> right on well you got tons of people helping you out this year so let's just do a little sponsor plug yeah thank you very much it's, uh, I get a lot of help from the guys at town moto in downtown Toronto uh, Andrew McCracken helps me out a lot with uh, a lot of my stuff and he's a big fan of the sport so it's, uh, it's a pleasure to have him uh, on board with me um, all right helmets um, K&N filters vortex sprockets clots fuels um, works connection uh, TCX boots and uh, thanks to you guys at uh, Law Productions guys for uh, enjoying it too it's you know I mean uh, we know this is fun and uh, we're glad you guys uh, we met and you guys we're, we're moving forward together so thank you guys very much right on well your number one winner tonight here in Welland okay everyone that is the end of the show for today here at round five in Welland now we're going to be heading to Leamington Wheatley July 19th and 20th I believe it is for round six it's a double header so be sure to come on out and check it all out